All right. Well, we have a great interview that I am super excited. I feel like I'm far away from you. This chair is heavy. (laughs) This is kind of heavy. That's fine. (laughs) Huh? I'm dragging the rug? Okay, I'm creating other issues. (laughs) And you know I have problems with that, so why did you call it out? I can only imagine how I'm at home. Uh, Anyway, all right. We're going to start now. Scene. Um, (laughs) We're excited to be here with the Petersons. And yeah, (laughs) many of you know the Petersons, but you're going to get to know them better this morning. And uh, I'll just start off by saying that these are uh, two great friends of mine at Chelsea's, family friends. We've spent time together, and I I love the two of them and how they serve the body of Christ here, uh, and they do it so well in many different facets of of ministry, which we'll talk about, Um, but I do want to start off, normally we get straight to testimonies, but we're going to go and take you in a day in the life of the Allen and the Peterson family. <laughs> so we'll go back three, three years ago, and they know where I'm going with this because they're chuckling already. And this is probably one of the funniest days of my life uh, <laughs> during that, that weird COVID time or whatever. So we go to Irvine Regional Park, right? Is that what it was? Yes. Irvine Regional Park. <laughs> I've never laughed so hard in my life at Irvine Regional Park. But, I mean, I'm going to put a couple pictures up here, and I might have them uh, narrate the pictures. But the first one, let's see what that one is. So this is Stacy on the ground. I'm laughing. I'm not crying. I'm laughing. What just happened? You're not not hurt. Yeah, you're not in pain because obviously nobody's helping you. Uh, (laughs) We're all standing around. Uh, Stacy, why are you on your back? What happened? Well, as I recall, I fell. I tripped, right? You, you, yeah. I'm you. pretty sure I just tripped and landed just on my back, as you can see. And um, you weren't hurt. You thought it was funny. Your, I, oh yeah. Your daughter is standing next to you with a stick. Your husband's <laughs> just standing there. I just see a shoe, so he's not, he's not too concerned for you. He's just standing, looking at you. I'm taking a picture of you. Probably yes. <laughs> so you're you're okay. You're okay right here. Okay. 100. Yes. percent Let's see what else. Was going on. This. By the way, by the way, I wanted to add something to that. Please. This is what's incredible about my wife. She will laugh with something like this. You take <laughs> a fall, there should be embarrassment, and Stacy's in tears no, laughing. You're like yes. cackling. You're, that's not a just normal laugh. That's a, I, I can't hold it together laugh. Yes, it was. That's yeah, so that, yeah. that's one. And I didn't hold it together, you, you obviously. Could. Yeah. You, you <laughs> fell and you fell in laughter, too. <clears throat> and then what? right after that, your son falls in the pond <laughs> over there. I am. Tr- I'm trying to get up to help him, but I can't get she up. Can't, Stacy can't get up. <laughs> JC still has a stick, looking. <laughs> Bryce over there is confused, and you see Greg start to run for him because his son's falling in the pond. And of course, this is Asher over there. And let's see Asher on the next picture. This is what he looks like up close. <laughs> I'm probably still laughing at this yeah. point. And Poor boy. Mind you, we're taking pictures of the kid while he's in, in pain right now. It's like, hold on, hold on. Stay right there. I, we'll help you. <laughs> he's always hated to be wet, too. And it was a chilly day. And this was, this was his aftermath. This is, yeah. But that's not it. <laughs> then uh, we get on the, we rent these bikes. And it looks like, I look ridiculous. I'll just say it. <laughs> uh, they this picture, this picture doesn't do it justice. It doesn't do no. justice. I, I was in pain because I don't fit in there. I was crying in this one too, just laughing so hard just at the scene. Chelsea got, and I were. You've got this little guy there with the white hair there, and then tall <laughs> Kellen, and Driving. he's like hunched over. Oh man, it was classic. Chelsea and Stacy are in tears now because they're taking pictures of us. But we got rolling, didn't we, after a while? Yeah, I couldn't drive it. You had to drive because I couldn't. I was too big. I think I uh, had to push. I think I had to push it first, right? You had to push to get started. So I, I because I trust Greg and I love Greg, and, you know, he, he's the commander for Awana. Like, you can take care of kids. Come to find out, Greg wrecks this bike with my kids in there. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. He managed to, to split these two <laughs> logs somehow and run into a tree. I'm not talking just a nice look. He hit the tree hard. My kids start crying. They still are scarred and scared of Greg. It's amazing. They will not ride in a car with Greg. They refuse. But he runs into a tree. Oh, who would put a medium right there? I mean, that's ridiculous. I can't believe they put that right there. 
And I, he, he bent, bent the, the bike. He bent the wheel on the bike, which... Did we pay for that? Did anybody they else? did not. They didn't require us for okay. yeah, to pay for any damages. We told them, but they said, okay. Yeah. See, it uh, happens all the time. No, it, no, it does not. <laughs> Nobody has ever split logs or poles I don't even know like how. You, I couldn't do that if I aimed for it. No. I mean, that was impressive. I had Kellen's kids in that thing. And he and tried, I to, kill, to, he tried to kill my kids. He did. Um, now, still hang out with them still to this day. But I, I think that's that's it. And one more picture. It, it was a great day. It was. Yeah. yeah. The, the little Tristan, <laughs> this is like three years ago. But it was a great day. We had fun. But I kid you not, we still laugh about this as if it happened yesterday. We'll just randomly send pictures of this day. Uh, but anyway, I say all that to say uh, we, we love your family. And uh, I know we get a chance to do uh, life together uh, in certain uh, instances in, in this busy ministry life, but it is great every time we can spend that with you, and I'm excited for the group to get to know you a little bit better this morning. So we will start with testimonies now that we've gotten that out the way uh, and reliving that moment. I'm glad none of our kids are. Are your kids here? I'm speaking. I don't hear. They're no, here, they're, but they're not in this room. They're not in this room. Okay. My kids are not. I didn't want them to be scarred again. So <laughs> I was going to invite them, and I told them it's in your best interest that you yes. don't come because uh, you're just getting over this, so let's not relive it. <laughs> All right. But anyway, let's, uh, Greg, let's start with you. Uh, would love to hear how you came to Christ, and we'll start that way. Well, I came to Christ. Um, well, let me step just back a moment. I was raised Catholic. My mom had us in church every Sunday and catechism and faithfully taking us to church every week. When I uh, turned 18 and moved out of the house, I, I stopped going and um, wasn't attending at church at all. I remember a time when I was about 19, I went out, out to lunch with a girl, and we had a great conversation, talked about a variety of things, and afterwards I asked her if we could go out, I could see her again, and she said, no, because I don't date Christians. And I was like, what? I was shocked, you know, but... Non-Christians. She said, didn't she? No, I don't date Christians. She, she perceived that I was not a believer, and I was shocked because I thought I was. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We got you. Keep okay. going. You're good. Okay. And, uh, did, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say she, she, Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's all right. That's what she's there for. <laughs> Helpmate. Helpmate. That's right. That's right. Right on. <laughs> So um, then about 10 years later, I was living in Dallas, and um, I had a couple that I had met and was spending a lot of time with them, and they were uh, encouraging me to go to church, and I began to go to church, and, uh, and it was during that time that I became a believer. In fact, um, I had fallen in love with being, um, listening to Zig Ziglar, and I found out that Zig Ziglar was teaching at the First Baptist Church downtown. And I thought, oh, I got to see that. And then that kind of hooked me in also. And, and through a lot of things that were taking place in my life, um, I just saw a tremendous change from that point forward. And uh, in my walk with the Lord, praying, seriously, diligently praying, uh, reading the Bible for the first time. It was shortly after that that I came back to California. And I got plugged into a church locally here and started serving in Kidsmen and um my the whole trajectory was changed from that point forward and and I look back at that couple who was so instrumental in leading me to Christ at that time so that was that was how I became a believer that's excellent thanks for sharing that Stacy what about you well I was raised Roman Catholic too um I had my parents split when I was growing up and I uh, got my mom's you know, she just wanted us to go to church. She didn't care which one at that point. And so I got in with a group of friends who were going to a Presbyterian church at the time, and it was more social for me. So uh, I started going to the youth group, um, thought I got saved at 19 years old, and showed a lot of fruit for probably two years or so. And then the world gripped me, and I was definitely a soil that was not good. It was the thorny soil. and um, But I didn't know it. I was super self-deceived at this point. I'd had enough Bible familiarity that I thought I was good with God and um, just went into major patterns of sin for about 12 years. And uh, I remember my dad even asking me, I used to work for my older brother, and my dad worked for my older brother too. And, and I remember him just saying, I don't, you know, my dad went to Compass, um, Jerry Perkins, if any of you guys knew him from 
before they moved out to Murrieta, but um, he would say to me, I, I just don't understand how you think you're right with God, but you're living in these patterns of sin, you know, and and I just, I was so self-deceived and convinced, you know, I said, Dad, I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain it to you, but I am so good with God, you know, like, I know when I go to, I mean, when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. I mean, it, it's like, I know I, I'm at peace, you know. And, and now, were you at church during this time? Like yeah. Going through, oh, yeah. Okay, so and this is part of it. And maybe down. a lot of the Roman Catholicism influence. Like, I, it was almost like, well, you know, sure, I'm donating to church. I'm attending church on Sundays. I'm feeding homeless people. Whatever you want to say. I mean, I had these weights on the good side, I thought. And then surely they outweighed my bad-weighted side, right? So it just warped, you know. So um, very prideful. Uh, nickname at work was, um, makes me ashamed, um, <laughs> the hater of mankind, and I just, people were an obstacle to me, you know, and God ripped and stripped everything from me, and it was so good, it was necessary, um, but it was hard and hurtful, uh, especially even to the people around me, but, um, but it was clear that I was walking with myself as my God and not God. So, um, interestingly, I was still spending time, you know, I was seeking the Lord, you know, Acts 17, just my specific circumstances is exactly what God used to, uh, bring me to a place where I would seek him and then find him, praise him for that. But, um, yeah. And then I, I, my dad had said too, why don't you come to church with me? I'm like, dad, I'm never going to go to your church. I love his old church, our church, right? Like Compass. I, I it's just, the irony is hilarious. But, um, but yeah, I started coming. Actually, interestingly, for counseling, and rejected the counsel. Went on with my life, and um, that's you know within that short period after that is when I got saved. I was attending women's Bible study though, being the good pseudo Christian that I was, and um, and that's when God started just leveling me and it was awesome it was hard but awesome and no looking back you know I'm very very grateful and I, I was under you know of course Pastor Mike and then Pastor Bobby because I was serving in the high school ministry so I had this double shot of uh, just passionate um, incredible teaching that really uh, God used and teamed up with, you know, whatever familiarity I had with him leading up to that point, and, um, and I just, I love, I love people now. I love the Lord, and I'm, yeah, I'm very, very grateful for him saving me. That's amazing. Yeah, it's uh, so awesome when we see God bring those things full circle sometimes, right? You be calling, what, hater of mankind? Is that what it was? Yeah, hey, hater of mankind, and then to get to grip your heart to where, you know, you love God and love God's people. You love them so much that you're willing to come alongside them in counseling, which you rejected, funny enough. You rejected, and then God's like, I'll show you uh, how I work. <laughs> you're going to start getting rejected by people that think they know more than you, but you're going to love them regardless. And so, just beautiful um, how God can do that in our lives so many times. Um, and I even think that, you know, God has a sense of humor with that. It's like, here's how I'm going to use you, how you never thought you'd be used, uh, and use you in a great way. So that's amazing, and just so even thankful for people like your father that continue to plant those seeds, even when you may think you know it or whatever, you're just continuing to, to share truth and, and bring that out to, to allow you to see just, you know, your sin before God. So it's such a great testimony to hear. Um, and Greg, we didn't hear this part for you, but uh, talk to us a little bit about how you ended up at, at Compass. So how did your path get here? Well, when I came back to California, I was involved in a church and had the opportunity. I started teaching or working in uh, Kidsmen and then had the opportunity to uh, go to Russia on a, um, on a short-term missions trip. And, um, and I remember going on, getting ready to go on that trip and and the missions pastor was speaking to a group of people that I was part of, and I was one of the of several people that were going. And he said, you know, I'm looking for people to go there and serve for a year. And I thought, I hope he doesn't think I'm going to do that. I mean, I'm, this is one and done. And, 
And again, God's sovereignty, from the moment that I got there, I was just hooked, and I wanted to be part of what they were doing. And it was International School Project, which was part of Co-Mission, if you've heard of those organizations, which is part of the Jesus film. And we were conducting conferences throughout the former Soviet Union uh, to the secular teachers there, and I was part of that for two and a half years after that time. And so when I came back, I raised that, I bring that up because when I came back, I was looking for a church and some of the people from the Jesus film, they were actually attending Pastor Mike's church in San Clemente. And so I remember going at least once or twice, but I don't remember Pastor Mike that much. And I I suspect he might have been on vacation that day or whatever, the few times I went. So I ended up at a church locally here. And, um, and then later, when um, that church started shifting what they were doing, I came back to San Clemente and found Pastor Mike's church. And from the moment, that first day I was sitting there in that audience, I was just hooked. And so, yeah, I was, uh, I was so, just the Holy Spirit just grabbed a hold of my heart at that point and said, this is where I want you. And um, that was before we came up uh, with an established Compass Bible Church. So I was there for a couple of years before we got up here. And then when the transition happened, I was here with Pastor Mike at that time, too. Got it. Got it. Yeah, and I didn't mention this at the beginning, but in case you don't know them already. So Greg is, he works in Focal Point uh, with Jay as well. He is uh, the commander, is what they call, which I need to find out why they call you the commander. Sounds like a dictator of, <laughs> of Awana. It's an Awana, it's no, an Awana I, term, yeah. Oh, it is. So you didn't co- come up. No, okay, no. I, I'm like, why would you do that? It's like, I'm the commander of you kids. Listen to me. All right, that's that's fair. It was already given. You just stepped into it. All right, um, I take back my thoughts. Uh, I <laughs> repent. So yeah, Greg uh, oversees Awana. So all of your kids, grandkids, uh, he does a tremendous job and has been doing that for years. Um, also graduated CBI residency program with me. Uh, so we got to take a lot of classes together. Um, so uh, doing CBI as well and all over the place preaching. Uh, he preached for me in men's and. Awana and all over the place too, and then Stacy, of course, is uh, just such a great biblical counselor that we have uh, with our counseling team here, and she helps disciple some of the the people that are in uh, the counseling program, and so she's doing a tremendous job just with our counseling program. Did I miss anything? You guys like are everywhere. I just want to make sure I you know, like that's good enough. Uh, no, but they they do a tremendous job. So if you haven't know, gotten to know them before, I just wanted to I should have said at the beginning all that they are involved in, uh, but We'll get to more of that in a little bit. How did you guys meet? Because somehow or another, you crossed paths, and you fell in love, and you have children, and you like to throw them in the pond and stuff like that. But <laughs> how did you meet? Tell us about that. Well, um, we, we both of us were in partners taken by the same couple. The, the guy, uh, Kevin, took me through partners years before Stacy went through partners with his wife, Gail. And when Gail was taking her through partners, she, we, Kevin and, and Gail and I had all become very good friends through Awana. And um, Gail said, you know, there's this girl that I'd like you to meet. And at that point in my life, I've never been married. And I said, okay, you know, I kind of shrugged and I was interested, but I didn't want to get my hopes up. And, uh, and she brought it up a couple times. And pretty soon I was bringing it up. Hey, when am I going to meet this girl? And finally... There was a partner's dinner that Pastor Mike has had in the past and, 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 and in the present, what am I saying? And, um, and we w- I went to there hoping to see Stacy and sat at the same table with her and met her for the first time. And that was in September, I think September of 09. Is that right? Yeah, that's Come right. Come on, Greg. You can't ask those questions on stage. You got to know. <laughs> <laughs> September 09. You're September right. September 09. And then after that time... Um, not much happened, and I'll leave that up to Stacy. Yeah, to Gail, you. she had set it up to, oh, you're gonna meet Greg, you know, and I'm like, I don't want to meet Greg. Like, I, I just, I'm, I'm focused on what God has me focused on. I don't, I wasn't interested in dating anyone, you know. So my dad was at the table too, and I, you know, oh, hi, nice to meet you, Greg, you know, and and I'm just, my dad and I were really silly together, so I was just not really paying too much attention to Greg at all, and I think you left thinking, what was that for, right? Yeah, yeah it wasn't much. It didn't turn out to be much other than to meet Stacy, and I was delighted with her, but, you know, okay, 
And we walked out, and I thought, okay. And then all of a sudden, I started seeing her at church all the time. <laughs> but meanwhile, she had had a conversation with the Lord that night. You should tell them that. Uh, well, I, uh, it was a little bit later, because oh. we would see each other on campus, and uh, God had not yet flipped my heart, okay. right? So um, I would see him, and I would pray for him. Lord, bring him someone. You know, I know... <laughs> know he wants to get married and have a family. Gail was very forthright about that, right? And um, I was water baptized uh, November of 09, so a couple months after we met. And he was one of the ushers backstage who escorted me, you know, on stage. And, um, oh, you know, I'm just always crossing paths, so always praying for him, right? And, um, and yeah, then I think I was, I was pursuing, I wanted to be a nurse, I would, have been, I would have been a terrible nurse, but um, <laughs> God is so wonderful how he orchestrates our paths. But I was taking uh, some prerequisites to become a nurse, and um, I had borrowed a thumb drive from a fellow True North co-leader, you know, and it put a virus on my computer the week of my midterms. Yeah. And at this point in nursing, like, if you don't get A's, you're out of the, like, you're not eligible to get into a good program. So I talked to my professor, what do you want me to do, you know, or what should I do? And he said, you know, just bomb it, and then you'll basically flunk the class, and then you can retake it, and your better grade will, will redo it. So I'm like, seriously? I mean, that was against anything I'd ever thought growing up, but whatever. Okay. So I do, but I'd already taken a week off of work to, um, to study for this exam that I had to bomb. So, uh, okay, well, I'll start plugging into church, and, you know, maybe Awana. It was like around... Cl- uh, it was finals then, because it was around closing time. But before you go there, you had you had told me about a conversation you had in the car. Oh, after that was the, the second the second partners dinner. The, remember when Gail and Kevin weren't there? Oh, okay. I thought it was, it was in after the spring. The first, no, that okay, was the okay. spring one. That's yeah. right. Uh, because we let me just step back and say that we we spent. Uh, I mean, for the next three months after that first time I met her, I would see her on campus and she'd wave and say hi. And I had this expectation of like, should I? be a little more aggressive here or not, and she would wave, wave high and very friendly and then turn back to her conversation of wherever, whoever she was talking with. And so by December, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. That was in October. Now it's been a couple months, whatever. And yeah. then we see each other again at another partner's dinner, not planned. She's across the room, and I'm now in this silly stage of I feel awkward. I don't know why yeah, I feel awkward. I felt awkward too. Yeah. Like, do I need to go up and say goodbye yeah. when I'm leaving, or what do I need to do? <laughs> yeah. The awkward friend zone. Yes, that was a friend zone. Oh, we're friends, but are we more than friends or just friends? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I remember after that dinner getting into the car, and I remember just having this thought of, um, you know, what what if God wanted me to marry him? And I was like, what? Where is this? What is this? God, why would you? That is crazy. That is, no. And then I, I remember just settling into a place of, uh, by the way, there was no talk of anything, let alone hardly a high, right? Like it was like just bizarre. And I just settled into this place in my heart where I just, I need to be willing to do whatever God calls me to do, um, whenever. Even if it comes down to Mary and Greg. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) My furthest imagination, I'll do it, God. (laughs) Add a pat, you know, I mean. (laughs) Oh, the Lord is good to me. (laughs) So, I mean, that that was just a a random thing. thing that happened on the way home from that partner's dinner. But then when my computer did get that virus and I was plugging in, and I'd never heard of Awana growing up. I was Catholic, right? Like, so this is amazing to me. And, you know, I'd see Greg and he's orchestrating the the closings and and preparing it and and just getting the kids and the parents all, you know, in order and and the the way he would pray in front of the the group and and, um, just his heart for kids to learn scripture. I was like, wow, this guy's legit, you know, I mean, he's pretty solid, this is cool, that's awesome, you know, still nothing, but then 
And by the way, when, when I was in that awkward moment for the dinner, when I was leaving, I thought, oh, you know, I need some people to vote because we had this poster contest oh, yeah. and I usually have some leaders vote and then I get people from outside of Awana. Maybe I'll just, I'll just ask her to be one of the people that votes, you know, and that way I have something to say to her and then leave. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I said to her, and I'll, I'll get your number from Gail or your, your email and I'll, I'll just email you later. And, and I said, it'll be a couple of weeks. And yeah. then I get a call from Gail about a week later. Dude, are you going to call her or not? <laughs> and I'm like, what? Yeah, God had flipped my heart. Like I all of a sudden wanted to hear from this Greg Peterson. I'm like, this is interesting. So I'm, you know, talking to Gail. Like, hey, has Greg said anything about, like I'm supposed to help him with this poster contest and grading it or whatever. And, and she took that and ran with it right to you. So I, I gave her a call, and we had this long conversation. I remember I was headed to meet a friend for uh, for dinner, and I was like, I got there at the table, and I said, wow, you wouldn't believe this conversation I had with this girl. And it just took off from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's good. And so September, when did you guys get married? So well, so we were nine. engaged before. No, we were we had our wedding date before we were engaged. Oh. It was on the okay. calendar yeah. and blocked off. There We'd already go. started premarital counseling yes. <laughs> before he had proposed to me. It was an interesting dynamic. <laughs> I was still All in disbelief, order, you know. That's fine. That's fine. You know? But we, we started formally dating, like, May. The night that we had the closing ceremony yeah. at Awana. Because our schedules were so busy. You took me to Denny's. That's right. <laughs> our schedules. Grand slam. Coco's. We closed go. that down, and then we went to Denny's, actually. Wow. Yeah, our schedule good. was so busy that we just couldn't find a time when we could go out. Mm -hmm. And um, so finally we said, you know, Awana's over as soon as the closing. Let's go out that night, have coffee. And and then it was like we went out that night. We went out uh, a day later. We just started seeing each other quite a bit from there forward. And when you say we met in September or October, yes, we met, but nothing happened no, okay. in, yeah. Yeah, until like I guess months. it was yeah. April or the something. And then person. that's when it really literally started. Gotcha. And we got married in December. Got it. So. Got it. Okay. Well, good. And before we get too far off of them, since we got the, the kiddos up there, why don't you introduce your, your kids for us and who they're most like between the two of you, each one of them. <laughs> Love to hear that. Our firstborn is Tinsley, uh, Tinsley Noel. Uh, she's going to be 10 next month. That's crazy. Um, yeah, she's, she's always been probably more like you. Uh, she is like a little accountability partner for me. She's a, it's 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 a trip. Like when I think either JC or Asher um, were potty train. I was potty training one of them, and I it, it was out the door for women's Bible study, and whoever it was, Asher, or JC, I don't remember at this point, but one of them went to the bathroom right on top of those, you know, those foam letters, like on the ground that can peel up. Okay, there's lots of crevices there, right? And I'm, I'm like, you've got, and so I'm like tantruming, you've got to be kidding me. This is disgusting. You know, I'm like, and Tinsley comes to me and she just says, Mama, I think we're supposed to have a happy heart. <laughs> and I was like, you're right. Yes. So, I mean, she, she's, God's just used her to soften me in many ways. Um, but she's, yeah, she's awesome. She's, she's a great firstborn. Yeah. And JC is our high energy one. And uh, she's probably a lot like Stacy, personality wise. And uh, always going, going, going. She burns out fast. When it comes time to go to bed at night, boom, she's asleep just like that. Yeah. And she, yeah, she's definitely she, the energetic one. Yeah, she's very uh, passionate and and very um, s social and just I don't know busy. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. but she's real. She's being affected a lot by her conscience in the last probably couple months, which yeah. is really a neat thing to see too. That's right. cool. Definitely. And she what? She's eight and a half. Yeah. Yeah, she's eight and a half. So. I don't know. You looked I at know. me. I was like, I sure. Know. I mean, <laughs> well, I, was, I, I would not have remembered three years ago that, that it feels like it was just barely, you know. I, know. So, I, know. Um, I had to look at the date. So yeah. that's the only reason I knew. 
And then Asher is our little caboose, and he's... Mama's boy. Yeah, he's got me wrapped a little bit, but... Um, <laughs> no, he's he is endearing. He's also very busy, very... Uh, loves to build. Um, he's what? a singer. He goes oh, to yes. bed singing at night, which is a joy for us to hear the... Door shut and hear Asher singing at the top of his lungs. Yes. What do his sisters think of that? Are they happy about the scene? They laugh when they're not affected <laughs> in a negative way. <laughs> right. um, and they think it's cute. You know, last night was the systems of the body. You know, they have these songs that you can sing to help you remember. And so, I, you know, I'm cracking up. I'm listening at the door. I'm like saying to Greg, it's the systems of the body, you know, and <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, just the other night he was doing the whole Christmas musical. So it's like, <laughs> he loves to sing and we love it. We love to hear him sing and hope God does something with that too for the kingdom. It's, but he's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. A great bunch. Um, so let's talk about ministry a little bit. Uh, Greg, we'd love to hear because you're you had to change a career uh, to get to Focal Point. Talk to us about that. So you're working at Focal Point now, but how, how did that come about? Well, um, I was working within a field called the low vision um, field, which is products for the visually impaired, especially people with macular degeneration or younger kids with different visual impairments. And I was selling equipment for that. And the market was just continually just dr shrinking and drying up. And I was having trouble making ends meet, especially since we wanted to have kids and um, we didn't have very good insurance. It was at the time when insurance was just skyrocketing. And we, um, I began talking to Jay Wharton, and Jay offered, suggested that I might be able to come to work for Focal Point. That was back in 2012. So it was a couple years after we were married, and it was just a godsend because the insurance we get through Compass is fantastic, and um, I was able to have a stable income coming in. So... That's how I ended up working for Focal Point, but and I you, work full time. But you there. were serving, like, yeah, a lot there too, be leading up to it. And I think that right. got that God opened up that door even through your heart for that ministry. Right, I was serving um, in various ministries, including um, not only Focal Point. I would serve at the golf tournament every year and help out with that. And then I was also serving with Jay in uh, men's Bible study, teaching in men's Bible study, and, and a, as a group leader there. So I was very active. That's how I knew Jay Wharton. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Jay, did you hear that? He called you a godsend. <laughs> I mean, it, maybe what you said. Not <laughs> he, <laughs> He's often wrong. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, well, yeah, and that's really cool. Like, you just think about you know, serving the body of Christ and how God can direct our paths is even with that, just that faithfulness to say, I'm going to serve, I'm going to be used because I'm going to give back to what God has equipped me with and these gifts that he's given me. Um, and for him to find your career uh, in focal point is a great thing. Well, plus I, I should say that um, from the point that I started serving in the church, it has been such a tremendous thing on so many levels uh, not only being fulfilled by doing doing work for Christ, but a great opportunity to meet and know people. And um, I remember I was attending uh, Bible study fellowship, and one and I was leading there. And one of the requirements are that you're supposed to be serving in your church. And I had just started coming to Pastor Mike's church in in uh, San Clemente, and I thought, what shall I do? And I thought, oh, Awana, and I showed up. Ed Awana and Brad Bannister, if you know the Bannisters, they were there, and um, Brad was the commander at that time, and I walked up and I said, you know, I, I'm here to serve, how can I help? And he said, well, we need a TNT leader, that's the older group, TNT leader, uh, we need a director, and I said, um, I know nothing about Awana, and he just repeated, we need a TNT director, <laughs> and that's how I started Awana. So, Part of it's a willing heart, but part of it is God just steering you in exactly the place that he wants you to go. Yeah, and I want to come back to Awana uh, just with the more detail on that because I know you've been instrumental here at Compass. And, um, yeah, I'll come back to that in a second because that's really awesome. But, Stacey, talk to us a little bit about how did biblical counseling 
Uh, how did God lead you to that? Because, yeah, you go from rejecting it to now, you know, he's using you in just such a mighty way in that ministry. How did that all come about? We hosted on campus here a conference um, that spanned three weekends across three months. So one weekend in September, October, and then November. And it was for counseling. And I thought, oh, that's that, that could help me with the high school ministry and maybe even interacting with parents. And, um, and, and I need to know more from a biblical perspective, you know, biblical worldview, because I wasn't raised that way. So, um, so that's, that's kind of how it started. And then from there, Pastor Lucas started, um, you know, kind of meeting with a group of people who wanted to springboard from that and pursue getting certified through the organization that most of us get certified through here at our church anyhow, ACBC. Um, and, and so that was the, the, I guess, the stepping stones to where I'm at. So, um, but I think because I was so duped for 12 years and I really thought that I was a Christian, um, to see... I just have such a passion for um, helping others to see that Scripture is all we need for everything in this life, and no matter what we face, and um, and I, I'm convinced of it. You know, I, I've I've seen it, and and I've seen. You know, I, I get to sit in a front row seat to others that I get to meet with, who when they apply God's word and and believe it and step into it, they uh, God meets them where they're at and carries them through it, you know, in, in just the way that he says he will. So, um, yeah, I think God definitely claimed it. Yeah, and, and let me have you just uh, just continue on that, that point that you just made because obviously counseling, uh, yeah, the goal is we want to present them God's word, and we know that through the Spirit because we're biblical counselors, so we're, we're – you know, trusting that the, the person across the table is saved because the spirit is the one that's going to do the work. But talk to us about what what continues to motivate you because, yeah, it's not always easy sometimes because you have people like, you know, the old Stacy that are like, I don't want that. You, you're telling me something that I don't want to make that transformation in my life. What keeps you going to, to know that, hey, I, I still want to meet with this person, even though, even though they're telling me, no, I don't want you. I don't want what you have to say. What What drives you to continue to do that? Uh, well, I mean, I, I know God's power, you know, and, and it's funny you said that, oh, wow, I, I don't really remember how you worded it, but frankly, in my experience anyhow, I, a lot of gals I meet with show up and they're, they're not saved. They're just as self-deceived as I was, and, um, and I think just understanding a biblical testimony and what that looks like uh, and what that translates to as far as transformation is concerned uh, and then discerning fruit and just, again, we, all we can do is work with what they give to us in our time with them. So um, just trying to ask good questions. And um, But yeah, I mean, I, I know God wants to save and I want to be used by God to save people and um, just be included in, in this ripe harvest that's in front of us. I mean, it's but yeah, you're right. There are a lot of gals who do show up too that are saved, and um, and it, it's just um, trying to meet them where they're at on it from a human level, just cooperating with the Spirit and uh, looking to His Word to be the authority over us, and um, and discipling them in that, you know, and and just being patient, and um, sometimes it's even asking the, the questions, like if you're not asking good questions, you're going to get bad information, right? Like they, they're not going to share what, what needs to come out. So it's even just a constant needing to grow and develop and learn on my end too, you know? Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And I've, I've had a couple counselees that have been across the desk from you before and I go read your notes. You were probably one of the best that I've seen at being diligent about asking questions and taking notes. And I'll just even say, because a lot of that is effort to help, um, you know, our, our system and our, our, our library of counselors. Like when we get a counselee, then we can go back and see what they've pre previously been counseled on so that we can continue that. Uh, but Stacy, she, she gives a lot of detail, which is great. And that's what we need. And it's so helpful. So I appreciate your questions and even how you, uh, 
uh, detailed that. Not that I'm nor sharing that. They're like, what, what, what is she sharing? You won't get to know what she's sharing. But she is very <laughs> diligent about the questions she asks and uh, just what she's pulling from these individuals. Uh, Stacy, what would you say to someone out there right now that is, um, you know, thought about that? Hey, I, I think it'd be interesting to be a counselor, but um, I don't know. What would you say just to encourage them um, to to pursue that uh, if that's what the Lord has put on their heart? just based on your experience? I think even if you don't get certified, I mean, I, when I was taking those those weekend, you know, courses that we were hosting, I, I thought, every Christian needs to do this. Like, this is, I, I'm a better wife. I'm a better mom. I'm a better, uh, you know, servant of the Lord. Uh, I'm just a better person and follower of Jesus Christ just because of, what I'm learning in the scriptures and, and how to connect to daily life, you know? And so I, I think even if you're, somebody's intimidated at the idea of, oh, you know, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Okay, well, I mean, the content is so rich and life-changing. Um, the opportunities that God gives us through that is worth it. I mean, it's awesome. And we do have the, cl- the courses over at, at CBI. Pastor Lucas has a program over there, and it's phenomenal, you know? So Yeah, and you get the, you're studying Bible verses, you're memorizing Bible verses, and so all of those things, regardless, like you said, if you become a certified counselor or if you're just using this to disciple others, you know, Jesus calls all of us as Christians to make disciples, and so part of being a disciple is the same thing as a counselor. It's like we're discipling others, right? And so, yeah, it just, it's not you don't have to end up being a certified counselor, but it's just so much fruit that comes from, you know, just having that structured study of counseling. That's good. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Greg, let's go back to you talking about Awana. Uh, I just want to know, like, how encouraging is it for you? Let me start with this question, because you've been doing it for how many years now? Uh, 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Commander in chief, 20 years. <laughs> Maybe uh, not commander in chief okay, all that time, but all right, whatever. most I, of it. I, I, most of it. I boosted your title a little bit, whatever. <laughs> I didn't. I just knew, I just found out that it was already a still title. I always thought you came up with it. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, but, like the, the, the kids, the clubbers get these little wings, you yeah, know, like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. They're, they're like, I don't know, I don't, they have ranks and I mean, yeah, it's right. just a whole theme in Iwana. So That's it's not a compass thing. All right. Looking at the fact that you've had kids that, you know, were with you when they were as cubbies and now they're adults. How encouraging is that for you to see, you know, these kids start off so young and then now some of them are true north. Now some of them probably have kids. Um, How encouraging is that for you and how motivating is that for you to know that you're making an impact at this age and get to see them, some teenagers and even adults now? Well, it's motivating and it's not. Um, (laughs) Okay. Because... It's motivating because I'm no, I know I'm doing what God has called me to do, and I am trying to pour into those kids. But the strange thing about Awana is, especially at the level that I'm working at, I'm not seeing those kids day to day. I'm not seeing the changes in them from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And then they go off to junior high and high school and um, they get, you know, wrecked there. No, I'm just kidding. We have we have an awesome program in junior high and high school, but they're also getting bombarded by our world. And so many of them also, uh, Stacy would attest to this with the high school ministry. You know, she's working with girls that she thinks they're, they're on the right path. And then two, three years later, they're in college and they're contacting her. And she's, she's saying, oh, I talked to such and such. And man, she's, she's gone off the rails. So, so, it's hard to know and measure what impact we're having. I look forward to being in heaven and God pointing and showing us the, the impact that we've had in our ministries. But I know and I'm convinced that pouring into our kids' foundational principles is what we should be doing, and I take just great joy in doing that. And um, so and I we hope do, that answers the question. We do have the, the success stories, too, of, you know, five years out of college, they're coming back and they're, uh, I mean, I, I see students that were in my small groups or at least in the high school ministry at the same time as when I was serving and they've got kids now and they're raising their kids up in the Lord. And, it, and it, mm-hmm. it's encouraging in that regard too, but it is a hard season when you're planting seeds in those younger 
yeah. younger lives, yeah. younger years. Right. Same question for you that I asked Stacy. What what motivates you? Because yeah, I'm sure it could be tiring on a you know Thursday every year, every semester. Right. Uh, motivates you to to continue on. Besides, we ask you to do it every year. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's um, just the concept of being faithful. Um, I, we were at a conference this uh, couple weeks ago, and I was looking at some just some pillars in our uh, Christian world. Pastor Mike, for example, or uh, Erwin Lutzer, Dr. Lutzer. And I began, I was going to be teaching on faithfulness in Awana as one of God's traits. And, um, and I began looking at these men and saying, what has made a difference in their life? And one thing that just struck me again and again was their faithfulness in doing those little things day by day. And so what motivates me is to keep going back at it and keep doing it each and every week. And um, I remember when I was first starting to go to Bible study on a regular basis, and I would go week by week, and it didn't seem like much when I was there each and every week. And the times when I thought about missing, it didn't seem like I'd miss much, but I'd press myself to go. And then five years down the road, ten years down the road, looking back and seeing what God was doing in my life through that, I could see the significant impact. And so... I'm just committed to that concept that we come each and every week and we do what God's called us to do and just continue to be faithful at that. Yeah, that's great. And same thing I, I asked uh, with Stacy, if because obviously there are uh, individuals in here right now that probably have a free Thursday evening, right? <laughs> um, and they might look at it and say, I don't know if I can keep up with those kids running around and screaming and all that stuff. I don't know if that's for me. Um, how would you encourage them? Because we always need leaders in Awana. Always need. There's always a need for leaders in Awana. Yeah. So as we get ready for this this next semester, how would you encourage them to say, this this might be something for you and we need you and this is why it would be beneficial? Well, you have some um, some veterans in this audience already. I think about the Langdales. I'm having trouble spotting where they're sitting now, but there we go. They have been here behind the pole. They have been serving in Awana for decades upon decades and faithful and um, so the excuse of I'm too old and, and this really isn't for me, it doesn't fly. <laughs> and in fact, I see some current Awana leaders here. And, and again, it's hard because you're there night after night and you might be tempted to think, am I making a difference? But you are. You're making an impact. And it's more than just the kids. It's also the families, the adults. It's the parents that are dropping off the kids and you have the opportunity to connect with them and build relationships and have the opportunity to witness to the many of them that aren't believers. And so um, it's a huge ministry, and it's, it, I'm convinced it's making an impact. Absolutely. And I love the way you said it. It makes an impact on the whole family. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes we have uh, kids that are in Awana. Their parents don't come to church, but they drop them off here. Well, guess what? Those verses that they're learning in Awana, they're going back and they're, they're you know, talking to their parents about them. And their parents are helping them memorize verses. And, uh, you know, even parents here that come to Compass, uh, my kids do it all the time. I'll ask them, what did they learn? And they'll just throw out something. And, you know, they'll ask, Dad, what does this mean? I'm like, well, hold on. I got to think about that. And I'm like, I should know these Awana you know, things as a pastor, but, you know, they, sometimes they ask the questions that oftentimes as Christians, we just say, but we don't think about, like, what does that really mean? Like, and how would I explain this to a kid? And so I think, uh, as you mentioned, it does impact families. It impacts mine, and I love, you know, how hungry my kids are to study those verses. And, you know, we think about God's Word, that it never comes back void, right? And so they, them learning these verses now, um, they're going to remember these, even, you know, when they get to junior high and college and high school and they get hit by the world, they'll have those seeds of truth because they memorize them at the, as a kid and they, they just, uh, they're still there. And so, uh, yeah, I want to say thank you for just the tremendous effort because I know it's a lot. I mean, every time I park the car and walk out and hear all the kids screaming, I'm just like, oh, oh boy. And then I see Greg, he gets up there and he prays for him and he's so calm and he gets them all under control and like, God bless him for doing that, because he's just got, that man, he's got some patience, and, you know, uh, God's using you. But, and to that point is, God's using you and many people that serve in Iran in such a big way that, you know, you, you may not see on this side of eternity, but I trust there's going to be a day where you're going to say, wow, like, yeah. that was all worth it. Right. Every, every day I was tired, didn't want to do it, it was worth it. Totally. Um, so, continue to press on, brother. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And let me also say that, you know, there's times when um, we're talking about the kids going home and, 
asking their parents to explain a Bible verse, but also the kids are so excited about Awana, and sometimes I don't understand this because you think about what we do there. Yeah, we have a time of games. Okay, that's fun. But we also, they come and they have to memorize their verses and then come and recite those verses. That looks like a test to me. And they got homework in memorizing their verses, and yet then they also get a lesson during the evening, and yet they are charged up about Awana. And the parents see that, and there's many families that I've met along the way that just dropped their kids off and weren't going to our church and now are going to our church. And so that's a huge impact. Yeah. That's excellent. Great, great. Um, all right, we've got a few minutes left. I want to throw some questions out there, just random questions, right? You guys live in San Clemente. What's your go-to restaurant with kids, without kids? Because that makes a difference. <laughs> it doesn't have to be we're in San Clemente. What are you? We're in Pete's place. It's our kitchen. We don't really go out to too That's many okay. restaurants. That's okay. <laughs> What's the main meal on the on the Peterson kitchen? Uh, we we have a grilled chicken that okay. we do, the barbecue grilled chicken, and it's we use Greek seasoning, and uh, it's weird, but mayonnaise kind of as instead of oil, you know, and then you sprinkle the Greek seasoning on, and and then we grill it. What you do, two to three minutes aside. Yeah, it's just quick chicken tenders. Yeah. Chicken tenders. Well, yeah, yeah chicken tenders. Yes. Chicken came over there, yeah. Yeah. and you were putting mayo on there, and I'm like, that's the weirdest thing it's I've ever weird. heard in my life. It's super weird. I need to come up with an excuse not to eat this, because I, I don't know if I but, can, but it was great. It was good. And I did it. It's I so, sold it. like, it was tender, and yeah. You know, Juicy, when we, we got so married, Stacy said that she didn't know how to cook. Well, she she may not have said it that blatantly, but she know. she <laughs> Maybe, like, probably, she yeah. set out to try to learn how to cook, and she began pulling out recipes, and she would try this one and try that one, and, oh, that one's good. Oh, that one, yeah, we'll let that one go by. But um, eventually she had this menu up on the kitchen uh, refrigerator, and it says Pete's Place, and it's <laughs> set up like a menu, and she'd say, what do you want tonight, you know, or what do we, what should we fix tomorrow? Or So that's what the reference to Pete's Place yeah. was. Got it. What is your, what's your favorite thing to do as a family? It's just if you got, you know, a day or evening that you can just go do whatever, what do you do? I would say going up to San Luis Obispo. Uh, my brother lives up there, and that's more of a weekend trip, of course. But we love to go up and visit him and just be up in San Luis. That's also where I graduated from college at uh, Cal Poly Pomona. I mean, Cal Poly Pomona. Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Yeah. That's good. So Yeah, that's a little bit of a haul, but that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, what is your – so well, I'll ask this for Greg first. You've gotten a chance to – preach some sermons, kids, all that. Do you have a sermon that sticks out to you or a passage that sticks out to you that's just been your favorite to talk about, to preach, um, to the kids? Let's start there. That Or that just that just seems to re, be reoccurring with, with the kids. Well, it's probably a little broader than, than you're asking, but uh, I love teaching through the Old Testament from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And um, I just, I keep wanting to go back, but I've got to wait for three or four or five years until the kids pass through Awana and I can go back to it. But to me, that that whole story of Abraham and God pulling him out and, and directing him and leading him and basically establishing the, the nation of Israel, that just, I love that story. And there are so many lessons that fall out of that. And so we've actually taught that a couple times in Awana and it's broken down into uh, three one-year programs that we teach that in Awana. So. Good. Stacy. looking at counseling, is there a verse, a passage that comes to mind to you that's just reoccurring, that's so encouraging, uh, even for you, but even as you talk to your counselees about um, any particular passage, is there one for you that sticks out? I'm thinking um, when Moses is one-on-one -on -one with God and he's... Um, it's the scene where he says, show me your glory, you know, and, and it's, it's on the coattails of God basically saying, all right, bringing you to the promised land, but you're going to, they're going to have to go in without me. You guys are going without me, you know, and this is my paraphrase, by the way, obviously. Um, and, and Moses is like, no, it's, we can't, it's, it, it's your presence that distinguishes us from every other people, you know, and, and it just, it, we need him. And it doesn't matter what season we're in, what our circumstances are, wherever God is, is where we need to be, you know, and, and his heart and passion to just have the Lord with him 
come what may, you know, it, that that's one of my favorite passages. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. And it's, that's great to always be reminded of. We need him and he's always there. Like the, what we're hearing this weekend, um, he will never leave us nor forsake us in the sit, no matter what situation that we're in. So that's, that's great. Um, prayer requests. I think we have some, maybe. So we'll throw those up there. Greg, why don't you just uh, quickly walk us through, uh, you're like, what do we ask for? I don't know. <laughs> no, I thought you were asking, like, uh, for, no, I yeah. forgot that we have prayer requests. prayer requests, requests yes. that you guys have, they could be praying for you, raise your hand. No. Yeah, so Greg, just uh, briefly, uh, you know, they're up there, but uh, summarize that, that for us on how we can be praying for you. Well, we're asking for prayer on uh, just to have wisdom in what we choose, because we tend to, we tend to be too busy, and um, we just need to be wise in our choices in choosing things that are, um, that are just good, better, and best, and be able to discern between that and how we balance our lives. And then also um, having a kingdom mindset in all that we do and to press on and being faithful to doing that each and every day. And that's hard because we get distracted just like everyone. And so we want to be leveraging our our marriage and, and our um, family life and our kids and whatever we can to be doing things for the kingdom. And that includes witnessing to others and looking for opportunities. Stacy does that so well, whether it's soccer or even when she's just interacting with people in general, she's just always looking for how she can, she can witness to that individual. So that's awesome. And then just stamina and having our eyes on, on the end result on eternity. And, um, so that's our prayer that's request. Good. Yeah, those are great. And we'll certainly pray for those as we always do. We'll keep that on our, our prayer list and uh, continue to pray for you too. But Thank we you. love you guys and so grateful to be able to come alongside of you and, and do ministry with you uh, and then see how God is using the two of you uh, for his glory in so many lives here at Compass. Um, so continue to encourage you to press on because yeah, you are being used in a great way. And I get to see it. Um, and I know many people can attest to that as well. So thank you for all that you're doing and how God is using you and your faithfulness to, to listen to that, right? Mm. So we're grateful for the Petersons, aren't we? Let's give them a hand for being here. Very fun to be here, you guys. You guys are great. Thank all you, right. Kellen. We love, we love you too and your, your family, and we were honored to be up here. A little nervous, but also honored. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. Stop. <laughs> well, let me pray for you guys, and then we'll dismiss God, we are so grateful for your plan, your will, um, and even as we heard this morning and uh, many of us can attest in our own life is uh, when we surrender our life to you, there are things that uh, you use us for that we would never even think possible. And Lord, I'm so thankful for the Petersons and how you have used them, uh, just whether it be Awana, whether it be biblical counseling or even focal point and uh, just the many areas that uh, you have gifted them to serve in and serve so well. Lord, I pray that you would give them endurance. You would give them much wisdom on how to use their time. As Paul says, we want to make the best use of our times, uh, of our time. And I pray that you would help them to do that, that they would look at each decision that they have in front of them and they would see uh, and, and think through and examine their heart uh, and find out what has the most eternal value and you would lead them towards that. So please continue to produce much fruit through them, give them much endurance and just focus on your will above their own desire and above anything else. And Lord, I just pray that you would give them uh, much fruit in all that they do. So we thank you for just having them here this morning. Lord, I pray that we would be more prayerful for them and their family, even their kids, that they would be saved and that you would uh, train them up and use them for your glory and your honor. So we thank you for all that you're doing in their life and all that you're doing in our church. In Jesus' name, amen.